Hello, good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. My name is Ali Ahmedi with TickMill, and we're going to be continuing our futures market outlook uh, moving forward, as discussed in our last webinar a couple of weeks ago. I hope everybody's done well in this turbulent market uh, as we've been going through. There's a lot of information to discuss uh, through, throughout tonight's webinar. Uh, I'm going to be focusing this evening on gold futures and uh, what analysts have regarding their outlooks for the remainder of the year and into 2023. And as mentioned in the last webinar, uh, we have covered what futures are, what their purposes are, and how to calculate uh, you know, their value and how to use them, whether you are speculating and or hedging etc from a from a technical standpoint of what futures derivatives products or securities are and moving forward we're going to be looking at market outlooks sector by sector uh, and uh, security or, or specific items within each sector i.e this evening uh, with gold uh, we'll jump right in uh, but before we get started uh, everybody is well aware, I hope, that the Fed hiked interest rates uh, last week, 75 basis points, uh, which is creating, uh, let, let's say, more uncertainty as to how the market's going to continue to react. The market is up today. I'll talk about that uh, a little more uh, as we get uh, further in tonight's webinar, just to pull up the market data so far, but um, with a 75% basis hike, uh, uh, basis points hike, uh, they were forecasting 50, as high as 75, they went on the high end, and, um, you know, the markets have been reacting somewhat positively, specifically today, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little more detail uh, later in tonight's discussion. Uh, where we stand right now with uh, the gold spot price at the time of this particular, let me make this a little bit bigger for everyone, at the time of this particular screenshot, uh, the spot price was trading at 1837. Uh, currently right now, gold is at 1838, so it's about the same uh, at the time when I Pull this chart up. Uh, this is reflective of where gold is trading currently at the market. If you didn't want to trade futures or if you did want to trade futures, this is the spot price. Okay. We're going to be looking at two specific uh, futures contracts in this evening's discussion. And if you guys can remember, you know, I like to keep things uh, in a conversational, informal way uh, from a dialogue perspective so I can hopefully get the message and information across better so that it's just not too technical and, and monotone. Uh, with that being said, we're going to be looking at where the futures contract price is for December of 2022, as well as where the futures contract price is for June of 2023, one year out from today and six months out from today. Uh, with the current price trading at 1838 as we speak, and this chart is at 1837. And this next chart here, we can see that this here is the, let me fix this up for you guys. This here is the December 2022 futures contract. So you can see that it's priced at 1858 at the time. Uh, this chart was earlier today, pulled off of trading view, and it's trading at 1838 now. So this basically gives us uh, the, with futures, it's not the right, it's the obligation to, if we engage in this particular contract, to during the course of time between now and the end of this year, depending on the price volatility of gold, the value of this contract will either increase or decrease on a daily basis and at the time of expiry which is 
in the third week of every uh, of every expiry month, whatever the price is, if we're profitable, it will expire and it will be a cash settlement into your account and vice versa. If it is negative, then there will be a cash settlement taken out of your account. But where the futures price for the December contract is currently trading at the time of this particular screenshot and chart is trading uh, is priced at 1858. Now, if we look at the chart for June of 2023, just out a little bit for you. Here we go. Make this a little bit bigger. Now we can see. Now we can see the price contract uh, for June 2023 is priced at 1900. So with it trading at 1838 plus or minus right now spot price, and the December contract trading at 1858 and the June 2023 contract trading at 1900. This is nothing more than, let's call it, uh, where investors, hedgers, speculators are seeing the future of where gold, based on storage, based on costs involved with mining and or storage and insuring gold, et cetera, come all into play within the pricing of these futures contracts, you can see that there is an uptrend in the futures contract pricing. Now, in the future slides or the next slides ongoing, I'm going to give you more than several analytical perspectives of different viewpoints from different analysts, from different financial firms of where they see gold headed, where they see uh, gold uh, behaving in, in particular uh, in respect to what's happening with the interest rate hikes and inflation taking place. And for the most part, moving the geopolitical tension that's taking place still ongoing between Russia and Ukraine. So we look here at analyst. Let me get my picture out of the way. All right. So from uh, tradingeconomics.com, this is their perspective. And at the time of this particular uh, article, uh, this, is, this is dated a couple of weeks, uh, but it's still relevant. And they are looking to, for gold is expected to trade at 1830 by the end of this quarter, which end of the quarter is end of this month, June, according to them on macro models and expectations. Looking forward, they estimate gold to trade at 1771 within a 12 month period. So they have a downward or bearish look outlook for uh, gold within a year's time. Okay, with it trading at 1838, they're looking at uh, 1830 by the end of the quarter. So they're plus or minus within this particular range of their expectations. But for the following 12 months, we're looking at a downward uh, trend down to 1771. Now, I want to go over several of these uh, forecasts and analysts from these different firms, not because I follow them and I am of the opinion that they are correct. I want to give everyone what the market can provide from a bearish perspective, a bullish perspective, and a somewhat in-between perspective so that you can formulate by doing your own research. You can go back, look at charts where technical analysis does have value, uh, important value, at the same time trying to factor in what analysts in the street and from financial firms uh, are looking at how they are uh, using gold if they're using it in their portfolios and or how they are advising their institutional and or uh, private clients on 
the commodity itself. Now from ABN AMRO, ANZ Bank, Scotia Bank, and Societe Generale, uh, the projections uh, from a number of these analysts indicate that gold price could decline over the long term. So here we have more analysts giving us more of a bearish long-term uh, outlook uh, with Australian ANZ projecting that gold could fall to the 1600 level by the end of 2023. So now uh, we're looking at 18 months from now and a year, uh, one and a half years, 18 months from now, their projected level for gold is at 1600. And the reasons behind it, they go into a little more detail as to where their ana analysis and explanations come from is based on aggressive monetary tightening, which is what's happening in the US with, with, with what the Fed is doing. Rising yields and a stronger dollar are key drags for the gold prices. Rising inflation failed to impress the market, instead raising fears of a more hawkish stance by central banks suggesting the Fed is struggling to contain inflation. So شو معناته هون؟ شو عم بيحكوا هون؟ From their analytical perspective is that the Fed is late in rising uh, or in raising interest rates to combat inflation. Inflation is out of control. Uh, the latest CPI numbers came out at 8.6%, uh, a rise from the previous CPI of 8.3%. And mind you that the consumer price index, which is a tzakaru, it's a consumer a basket of goods that they price. And this is what they use value wise to say, okay, is it more expensive or less expensive than the previous month and so forth. If it's more expensive, we have inflationary concerns. If it's stable, then inflation is in check. If it's cheaper, then inflation is on the decline. But in this case, it's still rising. Now, who's to say what goods that they use to price that go into this particular basket are the staples that the average individual across the US, everyone is buying. Now, there's a variety of goods of a variety of choices for each and every single individual product that they choose. So this is where you come in, this is not conspiracy theory, but this is where they can come in and say, most of the time that this CPI number of 8.6 is manipulated to, to a certain extent. Now that being said, real inflation, the real inflation number is north of 12%. It's running between 12.3 to 12.5%. So there is a discrepancy of 4%, which is a very big number when we're discussing inflation. Concerns about global economic growth fueled by sustained inflation, heightened geopolitical risks should protect the gold price somewhat and expect gold to remain supported at 1850 an ounce with upside potential of 1950. So here from these other analysts outside of ANZ, you're looking at ABN AMRO, Scotiabank and Societe Generale, they're looking at 1850 as a support level and the resistance level to the upside of 1950. We're currently trading in 1838. So it's below the support and it obviously could increase another 100 to 112 points from where it is now. So why the discrepancy? Well, this is what analysts do and this is how they use their forecasting models depending on what data and 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 they input into their forecasting models gives them in return. But this particular uh, uh, forecast and outlook is suggesting due to economic growth, which is slowing because sustained inflation is high, heightened geopolitical risk, Maneta, Ussabin, Russia, Ukraine, Bad Mokhulsit. So and at the same time, uh, because of this, it should 
protect the value of gold as a, uh, a store of value when risk is off. Because risk at the moment, the volatility in the markets, when risk is off, they call it the flight to safety. You have several choices when it comes to flight to safety. Amongst them is the risk-free rate of return from the US treasuries, but command and hon, you've got the volatility due to the Fed hiking interest rates uh, in this current calendar year, already 125 basis points with the forecast by end of year could end up being 3% uh, plus or minus. So the flight to safety there, you know, you're gonna invest in something that's paying one and a quarter percent or one and a half percent uh, as the Fed overnight lending rate window uh, with the risk of it increasing throughout the year, well, that you're going to lose time value of money and you're going to lose on the pricing decrease of those particular securities if you were to purchase, let's say, treasuries now versus if interest rates were 3% by year end. So this is where they're saying this is where the the store value or the value store of gold will be able to maintain and sustain. This chart here gives uh, the outlook of these particular groups that I just mentioned. I mean, AB and AMRO, ANZ Bank, Scotia Bank, and Societe Generale. If we want to focus at this particular column here, 2022, this is their year end forecast for 2022. So you have AB and AMRO coming in at 2000, but they don't give you any quarterly estimates throughout any of their forecasts for the remainder of this year. Oh, synthesia. ANZ AMRO, you can see here where the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter goes back to what I was saying up in this particular slide, what they were predicting or what their forecast is based on the aggressive monetary tightening and rising yields and strong dollar or drags on gold, where you can see here, well, for the remainder of this year, they're holding at 1950, 1925, and 1900. Well, end of quarter two, end of quarter two is when? Quarter two ends by the Ashra TM, Yom Wahta Ashin Shahar. Quarter two Tiflas by Tisatiyam, June 30th. According to this forecast, it's got to increase what? It's got to increase 112 points between now and the next week's trading week in order for them to, let's say, be accurate or correct in their analysis. For end of quarter three, it's hovering at 1925. By year end 2022 at 1900, you can see here they have a specific price of 1939. And then you can see the steady decline throughout quarters, quarter by quarter into 2023, ending at the 1763 level uh, for, for gold per ounce. Scotiabank, just like AB and AMRO, didn't produce or provide any quarterly analysis. They just give year-end forecast of 1800 for 2022 and 1700 for 2023. And Societe Generale um, out of France, they give us estimates uh, or forecast for the remainder of 2022, quarter by quarter. Well, quarter two ends, like I said, in 10 days, their projected forecast was 2,200 per ounce, 2,100 by end of quarter three, and 1,900 by end of quarter four, year end, just a little over uh, 2050 at 2067 per ounce, and they didn't give a forecast at all for 2023. So, شو مقصدي هون؟ مقصدي إذا واحد بنظره عم بشوف يعني كيف مين فينا نصدق شو لازم نعمل كيف بدنا نتصرف شو لازم نعمل بال بال futures contracts how are we supposed to trade uh, trade when we're getting uh, information that is contradictory to each other coming from professional analysis coming from professionals uh, and financial firms and institutions globally. Uh, this comes back to looking at technical analysis, understanding where the market is as a whole, not just as gold per se, but the goal, the, the market, the capital markets in general, where uh, uh, the, the global debt market is, the fixed income market is, 
in relation to raising interest, rising interest rates in America, where the largest uh, markets, uh, the capital markets with S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, how they're performing uh, thus far this year uh, in light of everything that's taken place. Uh, for instance, the S&P 500 year to date is down 21% prior to, 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 to today's trading session. Now today, the S&P 500 is up 87 points. The Dow Jones uh, is up 516 points. So you're having you know, what we call an up day, uh, which could be what they call a bull trap. A bull trap means we're in a downward, we're in a downward trend, okay, within the market. And specific levels are hit where retail investors um, feel that it's a good buying opportunity. Even possible institutional investors, bigger money, feel like it's a good buying opportunity to take positions in specific uh, equities and or uh, fixed income debt uh, opportunities. And they go in and they think that, okay, we bought the dip uh, off of yesterday's trading session. Well, not yesterday, the market was closed, but Friday's trading session, going through the weekend, they found that, okay, you know what? It's time for us to take a position, props up the market. But in reality, uh, in my opinion, this is not advice, but in my opinion, uh, this is a bull trap. And the market is in serious, uh, volatility, uncharted territory, uh, coming off all-time highs over a decade high of a bull run. Um, I just don't think personally that uh, it's going to turn around so quickly. We could see a turnaround that lasts maybe a month, two months, three months, even more, but uh, it will still, in my opinion, continue in a downward trend uh, for, for more pain and, and bloody market days. If we look at other uh, uh, analysis and forecast, this is coming out of TD, out of Canada. They noted that traders are reducing their exposure to gold as they anticipate the price remaining in a downward trend. So Hone, what they have done, what they're advising and, and counseling, not only for themselves internally with their book, but as well as their clients, they are shaving exposure to gold because they feel that gold is also in a downward trend. Now, going back to what I said earlier, the market being down, S&P is down 21%. Uh, cryptocurrency down, what, more than from their, from January, more than 50% or more from their all-time high in January, you're looking at what, 70% decrease, maybe even more, depending on which cryptocurrencies you're involved in, because that's a very uh, active market uh, that's in discussions as well. With these markets down, bond markets are down due to rising interest rates, uh, where the only green asset, when I say green, that's positive year to date, is gold thus far, okay? Uh, it, it, comparing to the markets. Now, obviously, Nuffet oil is up, uh, other commodities are up, uh, and, and commodity, considering agriculture, certain sectors within agriculture are up. But I'm looking at, in general, when the market is down and way down, and, you're, and these firms are coming out with this type of analysis and forecasting that they expect gold to follow the market down, it's been pretty stable throughout this particular year and it's still green. Year to date, um, to be exact, year to date prior to today's trading session, uh, it's up almost half a percent year to date. S&P is down 21% prior to today's trading session. So that gives you an idea. Um, they go on to say speculative length and ETF exchange traded fund positions continue to be sold off in gold with precious metals sentiment becoming increasingly bearish. That's why they are anticipating a continuation in the downtrend. CTA trend followers have also joined into the liquidation party and with 
Price is now below bull market, defining uptrend as we expected. A significant liquidation event may now be unfolding as these funds target a large net short position. So what they're looking at is basically a flip. You know, they've been long gold. Now they're going to sell out of their long positions. And, and therefore, instead of uh, staying in cash, waiting for opportunities uh, and, and dissecting and digesting what's happening in the market, they're basically going from a long position to a short position. This is from Harris. The trajectory of interest rates appears set for the next few months, which we've already discussed on Bitlau Tlua. If inflation continues to be high, keeping the Fed behind the curve, which currently is the case, gold could resume its rally. So now here is another an an uh, analyst providing their viewpoint as to why they feel and think gold can continue its uptrend versus what I've just showed you on the flip side, others saying that it will be in a bearish situation. Gold could, could resume its rally. The price will need to clear its April high of 2000, which that's where the resistance, where they were looking for that break of the 2000 level to suggest that there is more to any rally than just a rebound from oversold levels. So what they're saying now is if they can, if gold can break its support, uh, sorry, its resistance level of 2000. And when it comes down, it doesn't break down through that, then that becomes a new technical support level where gold could continue its uptrend rally. From Citibank, Citibank is bullish in its short-term outlook for gold in 2022. Bullish means Kamena Henne, they're looking that gold will continue to increase and rise and continue to trend upwards. Nominal gold prices may hold a higher range for the balance of 2022 as financial markets grapple with surging headline inflation, geopolitical uncertainty, and recession tail risks. Schumann at the recession tail risks. Uh, a lot of an analysts now regarding the equity markets are saying, okay, we're now encroaching recessionary territory where most of Wall Street is saying it's going to be hard to avoid a recession. Uh, inflation is, is too high. The Fed is too late with their interest rate hikes. And due to this, uh, uh, the Fed is just behind the curve. And when it's behind the curve, uh, the markets will be volatile to the downside. Investors will go flight to safety, interest rate related instruments, i.e. treasuries uh, in this type of environment are not this, the perfect flight to safety in their opinion. Uh, and this is why they feel gold will continue its, its upward trend. Citibank has a zero to three month forecast. So zero, month zero uh, is this month. This, this information is dated as June of 2022. Uh, forecast of 2125. So, in the end of the day, in the end of the day, June, July, August, by end of September, at any point in time within this time frame, uh, they're forecasting gold to get up to 2125 and expects the price to fall back down to 1900 in the six to 12 month range over the long term. So due to this volatility created by Fed interest rate hike when inflation is high coming in officially at 8.6 when real inflation is considerably higher than that, the flight to safety risk off, they're going to say, okay, let's get it in gold, we will drive gold prices up from where it is now at uh, let me see where we are right now. If it's moved anything significantly off the 18, no, it's at 1838 and stable. It's down 250 on the day. Um, that it will push prices to 2125 in Hala September. But is that the market would have adjusted to the significant hikes 
coming in from the Fed because more, more rate hikes are forecasted. Uh, the downward trend and the markets uh, will continue, but then they feel in within the six to 12 month range that at some point in time, the market should somewhat stabilize and risk will be back on. And therefore the flight to safety assets, i.e. gold uh, in this example, will have a sell-off, dropping it back down to 1900. Therefore the capital moving back into risk assets, risk on. From wallet investor, wallet investor, they're an algorithmic based investment firm, Shumanetta Algorithmic. They take all human nature out of the equation. Algorithmic is AI based, artificial intelligence. They, it's it's program based, uh, based on a specific formula or formulas uh, used that if then scenarios. So if gold hits 1875 you purchase more if gold hits uh 1820 then you sell more it's all algorithmic based on artificial intelligence input based on formulas and their their outlook is bullish in its long-term projections and this is where it gets interesting and he is a shift now Again, yeah, we've discussed what Citibank, Harris, ANZ, Society General, Scotia Bank, um, TD, uh, and and maybe one more. Yani had a city sabahkina fion u shifna yani nusun bullish, nusun bearish, but this one is extremely bear, uh, bullish. They're looking at gold price could move to 1940 by the end of 2022, which was seen in other forecasts. Uh, by analysts in previous slides. So you're looking at uh, basically a hundred point to the upside from where we are now by the end of the year, but continue to rise over the next five years to 2799, basically 2800 per ounce. Now that's that's a bold move, but Matinsa, Khamsisnin, and the market is a long time. Okay, you're talking each year has four quarters. You're talking 20 quarters of data, 20, 20 quarters of analysis, and 20 quarters of assimilation as to what's happening. And within a five year time frame, we don't know exactly how long, if we end up do having an actual recession, which is forecasted and predicted by year end to early 2023 where the market could be down overall between 40 to 50, maybe even more percent from its all time highs. We're already down 21% year to date, but you know, recovering out of a recession, it's not very quick. Um, where we've seen in recent, you, you know, the COVID pandemic where the market went down 35% and then it was just a V shape, boom, right back up when we ended up plus 23% on the year. 2008 financial crisis, the market was down 55, 56, maybe 57%. But then 2009 onwards, boom, V-shape, upwards. 2000 tech bubble, same thing, market way down, and then boom, V-shape. Uh, 1987, the, the, uh, the market crash, 25% in one day, boom, V-shape. They are comparing the situation to where we are now dating all the way back almost 100 years to the Great Depression. 1929 to 1933, the market was down 88%. Then what happened between 1933 and 1936, there was a small uptrend. That small uptrend, once 1936 came, it dropped down another 50% over the course of two years. And then the US was dragged or entered, however you want to look into it, uh, entered World War II. And then after World War II, uh, the market stabilized and started its, call it bull run and upward trend for a significant amount of time, starting basically from 1950. But you're looking at in 1929, the 1950, okay, that's 21 years. No one's saying that this particular recession could turn into 
a depression in the last 21 years, but a lot of what's taking place in the market is reminiscent of what they are comparing to the Great Depression back in the 1920s and 1930s. So if we do end up getting a recession now, uh, no one is anticipating that V-shape boom. Okay, we've hit the recession. We're down 21, 25, 30%, et cetera, masalan, and we flushed out what needs to be flushed out. And now it's time to go in and buy. Leish, Aishin, El Fed is not printing as much money as they were over the last two years. Okay, they 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 are tightening. Interest rates are increasing. Okay, they've stopped buying the mortgage-backed securities. They've start they've stopped buying back bonds. So they've they've basically they're they're scaling back. And by this summer, they will have stopped buying, which means putting money in the market for investors or firms, etc., to reinvest in the market to circulate. So once that happens, then you're going to see a further downward drag. There's, there's no more money coming in stimulated from the Fed. The Fed will continue to increase their interest rates. And this will have ramifications on the market that will, count, will contradict and counter a quick V-shaped turnaround that we've seen with the last three or four crises. This is from gold.org. Amid opposing forces, real rates will likely remain low. Despite potential rate hikes by some central banks, nominal rates, nominal rates will remain low from a, a historical perspective. Elevated inflation will likely keep real rates depressed. This is important for gold since gold's short-term and medium-term performance tends to often respond to real rates, which combine two important drivers of gold performance, opportunity cost, and the other one is risk and uncertainty. So with low interest rates, although they are rising in countries, which is the largest market in the world, both nominal and real are shifting investment portfolio more towards risk on assets. This in turn increases the need for high liquidity or high quality liquid assets, such as gold. Gold tends to perform well in periods of significant market pullbacks. So from gold.org, they're laying out that, okay, yes, uh, inflation is out there, but the interest rates, even though they're increasing, they are not going back to the Volcker area where interest rates are in the teens. We're still, we're talking the, the, the overnight rate right now as we sit is at 1.25, the window is at 1.25 to one and a half percent and forecasted to reach possibly as high as 2.75 to 3% by year end. But what they're trying to get across is even though that is a significant increase, uh, if you look at it historically, it's still very relatively low. And with that being said, the volatility in the markets will drive investors to have more liquidity, uh, more liquid assets. Liquidity meaning uh, assets that you can sell. Uh, there's a larger market behind it, money exchanging. This is how liquid an asset is. You don't want to have an illiquid asset because it's difficult to sell if you need to sell. And if you have to sell an illiquid asset or not much depth in their liquidity, you might not get a bid or an ask on that particular item, or at least where you want it to be. So uh, when the market pulls back, which is happening, gold.org is saying that gold tends to perform better, but they don't give any uh, particular uh, specific, let's say target or price range for us to analyze. In this particular chart, this is the performance of gold versus or compared with US treasuries, the S&P and the S&P 500 during VIX spikes. Limojudin, Shohi and VIX. VIX is the uh, volatility index, okay, of the US dollar. Let me khalini kabirish way.
Okay, so if you look at the S&P 500, here we go. So S&P 500 is in purple, gold is in gold, the treasuries are in green and the VIX is red. So whenever you see the VIX spike, okay, that means there's more volatility in the market. Okay, when the VIX is not spiking or somewhat contained or stable, um, you can look at the market as somewhat, I don't want to say predictable, but somewhat formidable and you can follow trends somewhat accurately. Um, if you look here, this is Black Monday. This goes Black Monday, they're referring to 1987. Okay, the market crash uh, where it dropped down 25% in one day. Okay, the VIX spiked, gold was still up, S&P dropped, and the treasuries held on. Okay, this is uh, LTCM, they're talking about the, uh, the savings and loans in early 80s, uh, the dot-com bubble 2000s, this is 9-11, the fateful event, the 2002 recession, the Great Recession, this is referring to the 2008-2009 era. And then as we continue to move forward, you can see on the bottom uh, specific dates when volatility and uncertainty where the VIX was spiking. You can see in red, S&P was taking its hit, but look at what, what gold was doing. Gold increased the most in recessionary in a recessionary market okay this is the great recession okay this was a let's say it was a recession but short in time frame this was very short black monday v-shaped spike v-shaped spike v-shaped spike also come in a v-shaped spike recession recession now, this is sovereign, gov sovereign government debt crisis. This is what they're referring to what happened with, with Greece and then the Eurozone, where uh, you know Greece was on the verge, or they did end up having to uh, go get help from the European Central Bank uh, on conditions that were met, uh, which they did take to help. But the sovereign debt crisis one, sovereign debt crisis two, you can see here how gold was performing Brexit, you can see very little impact on the particular markets from a volatility perspective. The 2018 pullback, which was the only negative year, 2018, uh, from a market perspective, was the only negative year uh, following the 2008 housing bubble crisis. And then here's COVID-19, where we had a lot of volatility in a very short amount of time where the market dipped 30-35% uh, between quarters one and quarters two, but by the end of the year, ended up 23% positive on the year. And you can see how gold wasn't really the safe haven at that point in time. What gold were, if you look at where gold's largest bars were, recession, recession, debt crisis, debt crisis, that crisis is looming now. There's more paper being printed. This is always going to be an issue in this particular era. But what I'm alluding to is recessionary talks are becoming bigger and bigger by the day uh, as we get closer and closer to year end 2022 and entering into 2023. Sorry about this. All right, so this is central bank commentary. And central bank commentary, what does it mean? Okay, there we go. So central bank commentary, uh, central bank the biggest central bank, obviously, the Fed out of the United States, is signaling a more hawkish stance. Mineta, they're signaling, they're signaling that they're going to be increasing 
uh, interest rates more. Its proje projections indicate that the Fed expects to hike approximately three times this year. Well, they've already done it twice, okay? It'll probably be another two times, uh, most likely, uh, while aiming to reduce the size of its balance sheet, which means that they're not spending money. They're not circulating money into the market. They're stopped spending, their, so they're not putting market money into the market. They, they're reining it in, they're tightening it up. So while there's a lot of emphasis on the relationship with US interest rates, gold is a global market and not all central banks may move as quickly as the Fed. So there are central banks, they're all autonomous. Each central bank, you gotta understand is responsible for their own currency and their own sovereignty that they uh, work and, and the jurisdiction that they are in to keep their economy moving according to their policies. So not everybody is in line with the US Fed because the US Fed's main interest and perspective is only the United States. They don't care about anyone else. The US Fed's job is to maintain their perspective and their policy specifically related only to the United States and its economy and its market. So that goes and applies the same for all other central banks. The European Central Bank has stated that it's very unlikely that interest rates will rise in 2022, despite the recent record inflation prints. Now, at the time I put this together, this was dated also earlier June of this year. An article came out literally uh, yesterday that the European Central Bank is gonna start tightening. And the European Central Bank is also gonna start rising interest rates. So this is a bit contradictory just within a two week time period. Uh, while the Bank of England increased rates in December, it's committed its committee seemed to indicate only modest future rises. Now, Bank of England is separate of the European Central Bank, Brexit, but even while uh, prior to Brexit, the Bank of England was always separate in, uh, a separate entity from the European Central Bank in of itself. Central bank gold demand, which rebound, rebounded in 2021, remains an important source of demand. There are good reasons why central banks favor gold as part of their foreign reserves, which combined with the low interest rate environment, continue to make gold attractive. This is also evidenced by the fact to two developed market central banks last year joined the list of buyers, which as has been dominated by emerging market banks since 2010. One of these banks that they're referring to now, the central banks is India. Uh, they've been on a buying spree uh, with gold, uh, acquiring as much as they can and so forth. So emerging markets, this is an opportunity. Strength through finance allows emerging markets to develop their countries, develop, shumaneta develop, mishmaneta, yani having better infrastructure, having better taxation, having better GDP. It's all of the above, plus one important factor is defense. Uh, defense from a military standpoint, gives more credibility, the stronger the country's military is in dictating foreign policy. And as emerging, as emerging market countries, uh, China has pretty much bumped itself out of that, but China, with India now in competition with the United States, in competition with uh, China, they are one third of the largest uh, one third of the world's population, global population, first and foremost. Um, they're very bright and they have a very driven, driven uh, focus to get India into, I don't want to call it superpower, but world power, impactful power, impactful government status. One of those things that they can do that through, obviously, wealth and defense, gold and military. And this is what uh, India is specifically doing at the moment as an example.
Two key headwinds for 2022, higher nominal interest rates we've already discussed and a stronger US dollar, which we've already discussed. Now, the negative effect from these two drivers may offset by other supporting factors could include high persistent inflation, mojoudi, market volatility linked to COVID geopolitics, et cetera, lahalla mojoudin, COVID supply chain, uh, supply chain management disruption, ba'da mojoudi, uh, uh, mainly coming out of China, and geopolitics, mojoudi, Russia, NATO, Ukraine, etc., and robust demand from other sectors such as central banks and jewels. Robust demand for gold coming from central banks, i.e., India and other central banks and jewelers. Uh, jewelers, late jewelers, jewelers, yani, uh, from a retail perspective, uh, okay. Uh, same across the world. So you don't have to buy it by the ounce in a block or a kilo block, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it comes in many shapes, sizes, and forms. But when retailers, uh, the, the average citizen, want to protect their money and they don't have any faith in the fiat currency, metal home Lebanon, Kiers in Wada. بس ما فينا نحكي على لبنان عشان الوضع هون منا طبيعي منا شيء ابدا relative to اللي عم بصير برا as a global market بس jewelers end up seeing more traffic coming in from retail investors and customers buying any different shape size or form of gold the key takeaways when considering gold predictions for 2022, it's important to keep in mind that the market volatility makes it difficult to give long-term estimates. And as a reminder, due to this volatility, analysts can and do get their predictions wrong. Now, and it, just based on the previous slides that we went through from the, what, good seven or eight uh, financial firms and anal and their forecasts and analysts, uh, their predictions, I don't want to say we're all over the place, but they were definitely contradictory to each other to some to some aspects. Some were bearish, some were bullish, um, so some extremely bullish. Uh, so, you know, you can't just pick one let's say research channel or option and say, you know what, my own hot, this sounds good. I think they're right. I'm just going to go with what they say. You've really, this is the whole purpose of what I was trying to indicate throughout the whole series, when I webinar series, you have to do your research. And that's where the next point is, is you've got to do your research and get as much information as you can from both spectrums, extreme sides, normal sides, and anything in between, and then be able to use technical analysis, historical data. Where are we now? My opinion, this is not advice. I don't think we're in a V-shaped correction type of market situation at this particular juncture. And I feel things are different than the tech bubble, the 2008 fi financial crisis, uh, the COVID crisis, et cetera. I think this could last a little longer. Uh, it could, uh, you know, drop 50 to 60% uh, overall uh, from its all time highs, uh, from a market perspective, S&P perspective, NASDAQ, et cetera, uh, even further could because it's tech related. Um, so, that in place with interest rates increasing inflation higher and uh the the fed tightening and not printing as much they they, they printed way too much money in the last two and a half years uh for inflation uh to almost be a guarantee and it's it's coming to fruition now and 
this is not a quick fix in, in my opinion. So you've got to do your research. Ending on a famous quote, the most contrarian thing of all is not to oppose the crowd, but to think for yourself. So going back to doing your research, and this is coming from Peter Thiel. He's a German American billionaire, venture capitalist, political activist, and he's the co-founder of PayPal and Palantir Technologies. So this guy's been around the block. You know, it's not just so easy to say, you know what, everybody's saying gold is going to go down, so but the Oh, is uh everybody's saying gold is going to go up, so but the bia. And just to go opposite, you know, you've got to be able to think for yourself. Technology and information is literally available 24-7 at our fingertips. You can pick up information on a, on a constant uh, feed of, of, of platforms uh, nonstop and for you to come up with what your investment strategy either needs or what you want to do. Needing meaning what are you currently in with your current portfolio? Do you need to hedge it? Do you need to de-risk? And how are you going to de-risk and or are you going to start building uh, a futures portfolio in a time like this, in a time of volatility, when you've done your research and you are confident and you've got your safety protocols in place, this is a prime, prime, prime opportunity, not just to sit back and say, you know what, the market's bleeding uh, and I'm going to wait because you can never time the market. There are plenty of great opportunities specifically in this type of environment. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to leave it here this evening. I'm going to open it up. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to share and we will uh, we'll go from there. Any questions? Okay, next seminar, inshallah, next week on Tuesday evening, we will be discussing copper and its market outlook and how things are happening within uh, the copper world. Until then, uh, happy trading uh, and good luck with everything. Have a great evening.